Now I promised you something, and I'm going to end with this actually. I'm going to use it as a tool toward the end. And that is the rest of the verse. To show you what I'm talking about. But I want to stress, before I do that, the other statement. The other statement about not doing anything in worship unless you find an evidence for it. In Islam, the first is to believe in Allah. Believe in Him as He really is. Perfect in every aspect. He has no faults. He is the epitome of each and every one of His characteristics called His Asma wa Safar or His names, holy names of Allah. To believe in Him and then to do your best to follow His commandments. You cannot make up a commandment though. And you can't negate a commandment. These two things are understood even by the early Christians if they followed what they have in their book. Matthew 5, 17 and 18 tells the Christian that Jesus is telling them, this is for a Christian. You want to do down to a Christian, show them you got the same thing in your book. Think not that I came to destroy, banish, or re, uh, uh, to replace. This is the word that's being used here. Think not that I came to destroy the law, the Torah. I came not to destroy the law and the teachings of the prophets. I only came to fulfill. And not until the last day will a single dot, jot, iota, Tittle, I use different translations, meaning the smallest character of the law be in any wise lessened. And whoever breaks the least commandment and teaches it, meaning that it's okay, he will be the least in the kingdom. But whoever keeps the commandments and teaches this, they'll be the highest in the kingdom. This is coming from Jesus according to them. That's their book. Chapter 5, verse 17, 18. There's a little bit more you could read. But that's in Matthew, the first gospel in the New Testament. What about Islam? We take what Allah says. What does Allah say? Is there any Muslim here that thinks he doesn't need the Quran? If you do, tell us so we can understand something new. Oh, okay, good. The next thing is, how much do you take the Qur'an? And if you said, well, pretty much most of it, then you didn't accept it. Because it's a totality. And if you said, well, yeah, but there's some things in there, I don't know, and it's modern times. You're out. I'm sorry. It's total. I told you, it's not tolerant. It's tolerant of non-Muslims. Like Prophet But what about... The one who claims to be a Muslim, and Allah says, it's in chapter 4, An-Nisa, verse 65. Allah uses a big, strong swearing that starts with no. Most of the swearings, wal-asr, wal-duha, wal-fajr, start with just the swearing. But this one starts out with the swearing of a negative, heavy, bala, like that. So no! By your Lord. And then he swears on himself. The only place in the Quran. Are you scared? The whole universe should be shaking with that statement. They have no Iman until they make you Muhammad The judge in the matters wherein they dispute. And then when they hear the answer, they come away with nothing in their hearts except to say what believers always say. We hear and we obey. The sign of the believer throughout the Quran, we hear and we obey. Yes? It's not tolerant. You take it, or you don't.
You don't want to take it? Okay, live as a dhimmi. It's fine. But if you say you're a Muslim, in front of Allah, this is required, to follow the law of Allah. To follow what the Prophet said, to follow what Allah said. And if you want to play with the game, I told you what it said in the Bible, guess what? It's the same in the Quran. Go to chapter 9, Surah at tawbah the one with no Bismillah rahman rahim on the front of it, and there's a reason for that, because Allah is talking about something really careful, you want to analyze what's being said. Verse 31, read it. It says that the Jews and the Christians worshipped their rabbis and monks. Ali ibn Hatim, a Christian who entered Islam, was talking to Muhammad Sallallahu about that. But they didn't do that. They didn't worship them. He said, did they accept? Did they accept from these guys halal, which Allah made haram? Yeah, they did that. And did they accept haram, but Allah made it halal? Yeah, they did that. He said, in that way, they worshiped them. So when you accept halal and haram from other than Allah, knowing what Allah said, you've committed shirk. And what did Allah say? Let's go back to the same surah again. Same surah, An-Nisa, verse 48, clearly says, Allah does not forgive shirk. Totally intolerant. There's no tolerance on the side of Allah. He does not forgive shirk to make partners with him in worship. But anything less than that, he'll forgive it. Anything. This is serious good news. Do you imagine this? That every single human being will go to paradise. Every single human being will go. Some will go to hell for a while. They were really bad people. But they'll get out. Islam teaches that. You want to hear good news for a modern man? Here's some really good news. A religion that preaches everybody. Everybody can get out of hell as long as they didn't commit shirk. Now, if a Christian or Jew start to argue, you say, whoa, it's your book that says it's stronger than our book. Go to, uh, let's go to chapter 20 in the book of Exodus and read the Ten Commandments. I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the... How the land of Egypt and the house of bondage, you know no other God beside me. Beside me there's no other God. Then comes the first commandment. Thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. Again, in chapter 5 in the book of Deuteronomy, same statement, exactly the same. In the book of Hosea, in the book of Isaiah, you can keep going through book after book and keep saying, I'm one God, worship me without partners. I'm one God. I, there's no God beside me. Whoever takes gods or idols beside me, they're cursed, they're damned, and they will have a bad experience in this life and the next life. This is the Old Testament all the way.